Hello, welcome to Marketing Matters, the show where we explore all things marketing and uncover those things that matter for you and your success. I'm your host, Denise Millay, and my hope and mission is to bring marketing and technology to you in a way that's useful without jargon, complexity, or confusion, so you can grow your business, expand your impact in the world, and live your best life. Today's episode is called The Power of Virtual Events. I'm joined today by my favorite entrepreneur, Kim White. We'll be discussing how virtual events can benefit you and your business. But before we begin, I want to share a quote with you from Helen Keller. She said, alone we can do so little. Together we can do so much. And I think we're talking about events, and I want to draw your attention to the fact that gathering with others can have a great impact on your life and your business, as well as on the group you're gathering for and with. So we should never discount the ability of connection to enrich what we do. Let's move on. So we're talking about virtual events and how they can benefit you and your business, but you may not be familiar with the different types of virtual events there are. So let's take a quick tour and just talk about a few of the different types. The first one is a summit. A host interviews guests about a central theme all the speakers have in common. I recently participated in the Fierce Entrepreneur Summit, sponsored by my special guest today, Kim White, and her amazing cohort in business, Carrie Zarb. All the speakers are entrepreneurs, building businesses while balancing all the things that you have to do when you have a real life and real issues going on. It was a wonderful, wonderful event, and I am honored that I was a part of it. A panel discussion is another type of virtual event. It's a small group speaking about one idea or around a central topic. And uh, an example of this would be just here on this show a few weeks ago, I had a panel discussion with two entrepreneurs, Donna Bender and Maureen Edwards, and we shared our favorite strategies, digital strategies for sharing and for, excuse me, increasing revenue. And it was a wonderful event, and we, we all got to collaborate on what we thought our strongest strategy was so that we could help people towards the end of the year increase their revenue. The third kind of event that I want to talk about is a conference speaker. So these are larger virtual events where the host invites speakers to share their experiences or their expertise with the audience. The topics may be surrounding the host or an occasion or you know something like that an example of this is i uh, recently spoke at the international women's day event for 2022 that was hosted by win win women and i spoke about my topic with social media and i was sharing with entrepreneurs and women you know how to use social media for their benefit and it was all about uplifting women that day. It was all about sharing skills and sharing things like that. So I shared my portion in support of that. And I think there were 35 speakers. So it was really a wonderful day. So today we're joined by my friend and fellow entrepreneur, Kim White. Kim is an entrepreneur, community leader, mastermind facilitator, author, podcaster, magazine publisher, and the founder and co-host of the annual Hope to Hope Conference. She's the fierce leader of the My Sexy Business team and believes in building a business to support the life you want to live. She's passionate about her cowboy, her family, and her fur babies. Hello, Kim. I'm so excited you could be with me on the show today. How are you? I'm good. I'm so honored to be here with you, Denise. Oh, thank you. I wanted to have you introduce to my audience of Marketing Matters, of entrepreneurs and business owners, specifically women who are just starting out. And I wanted to talk about virtual events because I know you do tons of them. And it's such an important thing for entrepreneurs to understand how powerful they can be for their business, right? So I thought I'd talk to you about it because I know you're the expert. So 
what would you say are one of are some of the benefits of virtual events for entrepreneurs? Oh, the, the benefits list is very long. And I do want to say I am definitely not an expert of anything. I want to say that I have lots of experience, but definitely not an expert. <laughs> um, the benefits for us has been profound, honestly. We have, um, we learned a long time ago to do in-person events and we switched over to virtual event events probably about six, seven years ago. And it was phenomenal what happened because we could include people from all over the world to come and connect with us that couldn't necessarily fly in. We had people coming in and flying into the in-person ones from all over the world, but it exponentially changed the outcome by having it virtual. So you really expanded your audience and just just drew in a whole nother group of people that you normally wouldn't have seen in person. Wow, that's amazing. I think that, do you feel like virtual events give you an opportunity to get to know people a little bit better? I, I kind of feel that way. What do you think about relationship building and, and virtual stuff? I think virtual events, if they're done well, can be a phenomenal connector because right. if you can see someone versus just talking to them, say on a phone call or, you know, something audio only, you can see their face, you can talk to them, you see their expressions. It does bring another level of connecting. And um, there's different things you can do like breakout rooms in, in some events that cause you to have smaller groups where people can get to know each other. Mm -hmm. So you not only are connecting, but you're also helping your audience connect right. and build community quickly by doing, you know, events. People want to be part of something. They want to belong to something. And an event is just, it's a great way to do that. I, I feel like when you're in person, it's wonderful, but you, you deal with people, unless you're on the stage, you're, you're one-on-one. -on -one right? One-on-one -on -one conversations. But when you're in a, a Zoom room, and as much as we all just aren't happy due to the last few years of doing a lot of it, I feel like you get to hear what other people say, and it's more intimate, and you feel like you connect with them, whether they're speaking to you or not. And that just, it just makes, it takes people's uh, BS meters off. Like they don't really just spew their, their intros. They kind of talk in real words. And I, and I find it to be so much more rewarding in a lot of ways, you know? I think sometimes the, the stage itself can bring this persona out of us where, you know, we feel like we have to perform instead of being who we really are. And when you're on a virtual event that I feel like is toned down, I yeah. feel like we don't feel like we have to show up as a personality, so to speak. We can show up with our personality. I love that. So some of the things that make your appearance or, or participation in a virtual event as a speaker, not as an attendee, what are the things that you do to, to be a great guest, to be successful? Like there are ways to show up that make things better for you as business owner and entrepreneur. And I would love to hear your experience of what works for you. You know, as a speaker and, and meeting lots of speakers, hundreds and hundreds of speakers over the years on the speaking side of things, I've seen a lot of divas and I don't know how to be nice about this, but if you are very demanding and you are not using your manners and you're not doing that stuff, it's a great way to not be invited back to any stage because what a lot of people don't realize is the event coordinators talk to each other there's a lot of them that are connected and there's, there are lists that float around of people that don't get invited back. I will say that I am proud, like proud of this based on, I've been willing to be the backup. I don't mind being the backup speaker. If that helps your event, I, I will be the backup. And if someone doesn't show up, I will show up. And being prepared like that has gotten me on some really amazing stages Wow. Um, in the beginning, and that was the beginning, but it also got me invited to other stages. It provided me opportunities just in my willingness to help. You know, I, didn't, I can tell you in the beginning, I did things like 
you know, put out chairs in person. Um, mm -hmm. I did a lot of things, you know, in person that we can't right. do virtually, right. but I'm always willing to be someone's backup singer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is what we call it. But when you support other people in, and you're in your right flavor, the right kind of people are around you, they reciprocate. They right. also want to support you back. So, so I think a that's a relationship, key. relationship building in every sense of the way. I also think about, you know, and I'm, I will say that your expertise has, has shown this to me a lot is that thinking about the tasks that somebody has to do when they're putting on this event. And we're not talking about paid things. These are all volunteer that gives you exposure and helps you in your business as well as that other person is to help them out however you can, whether that's promoting or, you know, things like that. So I'd love to hear your, your ideas of some of the things that people should think they should do when they're a guest. I think being a guest, it's important not to have them have to cat herd. And I know that's not a very sexy oh. term, but <laughs> when, when a coordinator is asking you for things, they're asking you for your, you know, like your speaker sheet or your headshot or your bio, don't make them wait. Don't, you know, don't make them have to ask you multiple times. That's right. a big one. Um, I also think whenever you're showing up on time, that's a big one. Those are ways to help because, you know, if you're live on a virtual event and someone is late, it shifts everybody. It shifts the entire thing. So be very respectful of those kind of things. I think those are some majors. Well, it's funny. It's like going to the dentist appointment a half hour late or the hair salon a half hour late thinking, oh, it won't hurt. And it's the entire day gets shifted because you, you thought you could do that, you know? So I guess it's just being a good human, being a good yeah. friend, uh, acquaintance, being a good relationship person and showing up like they're a client, like you would treat your clients. Well, you would, you would do what you could and, and treating this like it's a, an interaction that's beneficial for both sides and giving and taking, right? definitely so Kim this has been awesome and and I love that you're you're sharing all this the the people that well one last thing before we move on to your conference people when you're speaking at an event how do you coach people to speak about what's helpful to the event versus what their goal is I think this is a pretty big one that a lot of speakers miss is if you just ask the questions, what is the event about? What is the purpose? What is the goal of the event, you know, founder or coordinator or whoever's putting it on? Be interested because if they're interested in you being there, you know, they have a goal overall. Um, and I think that that's an important thing when you go and you're you're determined to speak on whatever you want and i call it rogue when you're rogue in the speaking and you're going to do whatever you want no matter what they say mm -hmm. i'm i'm just here to tell you there's that's a way to get on the list of not getting invited to places. Get <laughs> yes and so if you people, want to stay on the list people don't they think can. that's true but it is it is true yeah. I mean, you know, it's just like there are people you don't want to work with. There's people you don't want to invite if they're going to be difficult and they're not going to help and they're not going to be positive influence on what you're trying to do and meet your goals. So I get that because it can be so beneficial. It can be so uplifting for everybody, but all it takes is everybody to just be very um, selfish or too self-centered and miss the opportunity to contribute and to do that. So I love that you shared that. Thank you. I know you have an amazing event coming up in November, uh, November 17th and 18th, and it's called the Hope to Hope Conference. And I'm wondering if you'd share a little bit about the event and how it came to be. Well, this is kind of one of those things that's a little bit hard to talk about just because it's based on something that was very tragic. It's based on the loss of my 13-year-old um, son. And when he passed away, I, I had a really hard time, like just, just putting it out there. I had a really hard time. 
And I realized I needed hope. I needed hope that I was going to survive that. I needed hope that I was going to get, you know, past it where I could maybe breathe again. And, and anyone who's had a great loss, they understand it. It really takes your breath away. And I needed hope. So over time, I started noticing other people needed hope for what they were going through. And in my mind at the time, I thought hope was something we needed like a single dose of. I will say that we either had hope or we didn't, but I don't believe that anymore. I've, I've witnessed, we go from one thing we need hope for to another thing we need hope for. So that's where the name hope to hope came from is we need different kinds of hope throughout our lifetime. And I wanted to facilitate that. I wanted that to be something that was a legacy for him, that he was here, he's not forgotten, he mattered, and that we can do that for other people. We do it every year, the week before Thanksgiving here in the United States. And the holidays are hard for people. Like a lot of people struggle through the holidays. And we have chosen to make sure that we are there. And, and I giggle because, you know, imagine us standing on street corners where the hope dealers. Exactly. And, you know, it's something that is definitely not a selling conference. That's something right. else that makes it different. Mm -hmm. It's something that we are giving. It's our give back every single year for our, you know, our, our business sponsors it. Wow. That's amazing. And I'm so excited. I'm going to be one of the speakers at the event this year and it'll be my first one. So I'm very excited, but I, I marvel at the depth of feeling you have and your ability to share that with the world, which is not, is very unusual. I mean, a lot of people retreat into themselves with trauma and tragedy. And I just applaud you for, for turning it into something positive as much as possible. And so that's really awesome. Thank you for saying that. And I'm very honored. You said yes to be a speaker. I feel like you have such huge value to give and you will, you will definitely be a great addition to the conference. You are one of the featured speakers. And I think that that's a really important, like, and it's important for you to hear back though, how important you are to, you know, to me and to the vision of this conference. So thank you for saying yes. Well, thank you. I'm excited. I really am. I, as much as it's not always easy to talk about the difficult and talk about the things that stress and, and strain us. It's, it's, uh, if there's one person that could benefit, it's worth doing. So that's Definitely. where I come from. I think we're on the same page there. So how could people find out more about the conference and learn how to connect with the conference? And probably the easiest way is our website. It's mysexybusiness.com. Mm -hmm. All the information is there for all of our events, like all the things that we do. Um, you were just a speaker at another event we had, a summit. Yeah. And that was pretty exciting. That was good. We had a, the Fierce Entrepreneur Summit, which I was blessed to be one of how many of us? Nine, was it? I think there was a total of 14, but 14. I, okay. I think I, we do so many things. Oh, I five. apologize for not knowing the answer right off the top of my head. Yeah, but it was two days and, and I, I love the format. I love the interview format. I love that it was uh, ca casual, but not, and, and fun and everybody yeah, we have a great community. I'm, I'm really blessed to be a part of this community that, that you and Carrie have created. So I'm blessed. So we're blessed. You chose us. That's what we're blessed for. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. We'll bless each other then. And um, I am so pleased that you can join us for Marketing Matters. It's, it's, it's a love for me to share expertise with people who are starting and who are trying to figure out this journey and all the moving parts. And you have so much to give. And I'm so excited for your event. If people want to find out more about it, they could definitely go to mysexybusiness.com, all one word. And there's tons of information about the events there. And you can definitely sign up so that you'll get a notification and a link to 
to join the event. So it doesn't cost anything. It's totally free. So we'd love to have you there. And thank you, Kim. Uh, I appreciate your time and your. That was a fantastic interview. And thank you so much, Kim, again. I want to share a bit more with you about the Hope to Hope Conference. When my. lives and in their businesses. Some things are inflicted on us and some things we inflict on ourselves. Either way, we all need hope. Hope that we can survive. Hope that we can heal. Hope that we can really live again. I hope you will join me. It is going to be two nights, Thursday, November 16th, and Friday, November 17th, that's this week, and it is free event, live on YouTube and Facebook and the MySexyBusiness.com website. If you want to sign up to attend the after party on Friday, you can on that page, it's MySexyBusiness.com slash hope dash two dash hope. And I really hope that you will join us. I know that the stories will be amazing and moving and fill up your bucket of hope for the rest of the year. And thank you. I'm so glad you could join me for Marketing Matters. I know how precious your time is, and my hope is you came away with a nugget or two that you can apply to your business. My aim is to provide clear, useful information for you so you can have a thriving business, amazing relationships with your customers and clients, and... As always, if you have any questions, send me a message via Instagram or Facebook, and I'll be happy to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks so much. Join me here next week for our next episode where we'll dive into more marketing topics that matter for you. Thanks so much for your time.